Hi, my name is Peter Huang, and I'm the vocal percussionist and co-founder for My Capella, a Singaporean vocal band. Okay, so this is a question that will be answered differently by every group. Uh, for me, it's six. Uh, why in particular six? To me, you must have a vocal percussion and a bass to form your rhythm section. Okay, uh, and that's going to hold the framework and the foundation. Okay, uh, on top, there has to be somebody singing the melody line. Could be a guy, could be a girl. Uh, and in the middle, you have to have three people to fill out a full triad chord harmony. Okay, uh, and that brings you to six parts. I did try to have uh, all male six tet when I was in school. Uh, I found that it's very difficult to get six guys to work properly together. Uh, guys who've been to the army will know what I mean. But when there is a few female members around, things tend to get a bit more organized. So I think it's a good mix interpersonally and it widens the range of what we can do in terms of our voices. So yeah, six is my version of ideal. Music scores are useful because you cannot depend on the human brain to memorize. Uh, it's never going to be 100% accurate. Uh, so if something starts to sound like people are inventing things that were not on the original score and it sounds weird, then you always have something to go back and reference. It, it's always important to have that archival so that you have a foundation to work off of. So it's for documentation and something for you to reset the song if it, if it needs to happen. The timing issue is a bit more objective. Uh, if a note lasts for three counts out of four within that bar, then it would be three counts. So let's say, for example, uh, if it's written down the first three counts of the bar, so one, two, three, four, ah, so the last count is vacant, there's no sound. That is all written down in the score, so it is very objective. When it comes to loud or soft, then this is a bit uh, subjective, because what you think is loud and what your bandmate thinks is loud might not be the same. So you try to get together to rehearse and then hear it and see what it sounds like in combination, then discuss, communicate, and come to a compromise so that the overall effect is still achieved. Uh, ultimately, this is decided by the, the two co-music directors in, in our band, which is myself and Karen. Um, but it, it definitely needs some compromise and discussion. Uh, usually, uh, what we do is I have a count off. So uh, let's say the song is one, two, three, and then, you know, so there is a bit of a, a count off. And usually I would yell the count off off mic, so I'll put down the mic. One, two, three, and then, you know. So, but the, there is already a sense of what the pulse is even before we put the mics up to the mouth. But they can hear me yelling off mic. Um, and sometimes the first row can hear. Um, for pitch, usually Cal will give us a bit of a reference, but we have our you know, tips and tricks uh, that we do on stage. Like we'll pretend to converse, but actually the, the pitch is being passed around. Um, so there are all these little techniques. It, all this, in the meantime, the person who doesn't need that information as much is introducing the next song. So the eyes and ears and attention is drawn to the person speaking in front, while the back is like communicating. I always identify as a vocal percussionist and, and not as a beatboxer. Um, and I, I learned this when I first met an African-American hip-hop artist who sat me down and explained what hip-hop was. And sequentially, hip-hop is comprised of these following elements. Firstly, it was graffiti. Secondly, it was uh, DJs. Thirdly, it was MCs. Fourthly, it was beatboxers. And then fifthly, it was breakdancers. So it was in that chronological sequence. So beatboxing being one of the five elements of hip-hop, uh, is very much part of African-American hip-hop culture, especially in the northeastern part of the US. So New York, uh, the tri-state area, Jersey, Boston, that part. And that's when I understood that it was 
out of poverty that beatboxers imitated what DJs were doing so that freestyle MCs could practice. That's how beatboxing was born. And there was a particular piece of equipment that came out that was in the shape of a box that was one of the earliest portable electronic drum kits. So colloquially, it was referred to the beatbox because it was a box that produced beats, right? So in conversation, people would be like, hey, could you use your mouth and do that beatbox thing? And that's how the term came about. Vocal percussionists, on the other hand, are a human imitation of a drummer in a band. So it could be a rock band, it could be a jazz band, it could be any kind of musical genre. But it is not specific to uh, any particular uh, genre, therefore it's not like hip-hop, right? So it's not like beatboxers and hip-hop, there's a particular relationship there. So that is a uh, imitation of, a uh, beatboxer is an imitation of a DJ, and a vocal percussionist is an imitation of a drum. That's, to me, the primary difference. To me, the relationship between the VP and the bass singer in the, in the a cappella group is the same as the drummer and the bass guitar player in a rock band. Uh, we are there to create the framework, the foundation, the groove, the energy, the pulse. So on this foundation, then the group can tell the story. Right? Uh, the lead singer can express what the story is about, the other parts uh, that are emulating the guitars, keyboards, backing vocalists, whatever it may be, can help to support the storytelling. And we are there to either push the energy or draw back the energy to create contrast, whatever the story needs. Uh, but it would be as an accompaniment, not as a lead. So that, to me, is our function. Different people have different tendencies towards learning certain instruments. So for me, uh, I was faster at picking up drums. So kick drum, <laughs> uh, rim shot, <laughs> snare drum, <laughs> hi-hat, <laughs> toms, dum, dum, dum. <laughs> which is crash, combination. <laughs> okay, uh, and somewhere in there, sometimes I add a little bit of scratching. So. <laughs> Um, some guys would add a bit of crab scratch, which is... Um, some guys would add um, some synthesized bass, so... So for the more jazzy stuff, then the, the, the sounds are quite different. Uh, so and then the bass guitar would also sound different from a rock situation, which is more... For example, which is quite um, harsh sounding. So if you're in a jazz situation, it's no longer a bass guitar, usually a double bass. So it's more... I can't play the actual thing, so... Um, what else? Some electric guitar sounds can be made with the lower lip interacting with the upper teeth. So that's a little bit of electric guitar with some distortion. Uh, sometimes we use some jazzy trumpet sounds, so like... Uh, so that's... The other view of the trumpet? <coughs> this one's a bit painful. <coughs> So that's another kind of music trumpet. The band likes to say that my um, my phased drums sound like sleigh bells. You tell me. It's supposed to be some EDM type thing, but then apparently when I do. It sounds like they're shaking through the snow. So I'm not sure what to think about it anymore. <laughs> it's supposed to be cool. No, it sounds like a jingle. So yeah. Those are some. Some people can do others. These are the ones I happen to do. When you are creating your band, <laughs> you audition and choose people who have good sense of pitch. 
<laughs> that makes it easier to stay in pitch as a band. Okay, but understanding that the, <laughs> that's not the spirit of the question, uh, generally, you want to have some ear training so that you have a good sense of pitch or pitch stability. So when the pitch is assigned to you for a particular song, or a key is assigned for this particular song, and you hear the reference, um, you're able to remember it for a longer time and with more accuracy. Okay, and uh, within the duration of a song, the band could drift in pitch. Okay, because everybody's understanding of how the pitch is uh, in terms of pitch memory might change a little bit within a four minute, three and a half minute span. But it is important to have your ears open, quote unquote, uh, which is basically trying to multitask. You need to hear what you're doing and relate it to what your band members are doing and to make micro adjustments so that everybody stays within the same key. Even if everybody's going off a little bit, everybody's going off together, right? So that everything doesn't disassemble. You're trying to stick together as a, as a, as a team. So even if it drifts a little bit, the audience can't really tell if you've drifted, unless it's very, very extreme, so long as you stay together and it sounds intact. So the intactness is more important than whether you drifted or not. So that's the short answer. So it's, it's extremely important to listen out to what is the reference pitch for your song, for the key of your song. Because if you don't, <laughs> like me, I kind of rushed into a song uh, when my band was very, very uh, young. Uh, we were three months old as a group and I was overexcited. And as a drummer, I don't really care about the pitch giving. And that particular song was uh, Harder to Breathe by Maroon 5. So if you are familiar, it starts with eight snare drums. One, two. How dare you say that, man? So on and so forth, right? So I went straight into the song. I didn't even give the band a chance to coordinate the key. <laughs> So everybody gave it a random key. <laughs> and it was epic nonsense. But it was in the middle of a competition, so we couldn't stop. <laughs> so we saw... I, can you imagine my horror? I have to continue drumming, while I hope the other part of them somehow agree on the pitch, on the key. So by this... <laughs> the first chorus was horrendous. Uh. Then by the second verse, okay, they kind of agree on the key. But it was also super off. La. So it was super high. So everybody was killing chickens. It was just nonsense. La. So cautionary tale. Listen for your pitch before you start singing. Vocal percussionists, please don't rush into the song. Thank you. Firstly, as with all endeavors that are worth doing, it's going to take a lot of time and hard work. Uh, it's not going to be easy. Okay. Uh, but the, the most important thing is that uh, you have to have a good plan and you stick to your plan, okay? And then you have the correct people uh, in the correct roles, okay? Um, when I say correct people, it's not just about musical ability. It's about, it is also equally important, if not more important actually, that you have people who can get along and work together. Because um, there's no point having somebody who's musically excellent if it's difficult to play ball together as a team. Um, at the end of the day, it's absolutely paramount that there is good teamwork. This is not the kind of uh, activity where you can function uh, trying to take over the whole situation. It's not going to work that way. So there has to be a good delegation of roles and a good sense of macro-organization. Um, and then you move forward together. And that's how it's got to work. Teamwork. Okay, so especially in the 21st century and uh, given this COVID environment, uh, knowing how to sing is one thing and knowing what, uh, how to read scores and memorize your songs well is also super important. But as modern musicians, we have to know how to self-record. Uh, it is super crucial uh, and you have to be able to create your own content uh, without having to go to an expensive studio and rely on a producer and a studio owner to provide all these functions. So, you need to get a good solid laptop. This happens to be my preference. Okay, MacBook Pro. You need to get a good audio interface. This happens to be my preference. 
that is linked to a good microphone, especially if you're a singer. You can also use this to record acoustic guitar, which I sometimes do. Okay, uh, when you are listening to everything, get a good pair of headphones. Now, these just happen to be what I like. I'm not saying you have to get these particular brands and models, um, but do something that's within your budget and make sure that you have all these necessary components as a singer. If you're an instrumentalist, then you need other kinds of cables to plug into your guitar or your keyboard or whatnot. Um, but the important thing to take away from all this is you need to know how to create, record, and post up your own content in this 21st century environment with social media and all that. Without which, you're going to be a lot more dependent on a lot of other people to help you get your, your works out there for consumers. So, got to learn this. So I hope you guys have learned a little bit about what Acapella is all about and uh, enjoyed listening to some of uh, my stories about me and my band, my Capella. So thank you and I hope to see you guys at Voices, a festival of songs.